All right, welcome back everybody to our favorite hangout or restaurant project. Between the last video and this video, I asked you to go ahead and fill in your populate menu method with the items from your restaurant that you're doing. Now what we want to do is um, create some getters and setters so that we can call these items in the menu. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to put these under my assessors and mutators. Alright, so we will write a method to get an appetizer. So we will write a comment that says returns a specific appetizer. And then we're going to write public. And since we're returning an item, which is a class, we need to actually say public item, get appetizer. And then we want an appetizer at a specific index in our appetizer array, so we need to pass in an index number. And this could, so I just named the variable index. You could name it num or number or i, whatever is convenient for you. However, variables should be named um, with something that's understandable. So, all right, so we're return appetizers. And then if for arrays, if we want to get something out of an array, we use the get method. And we're passing, of course, that index number. All right, so let's go ahead and test this. We're going to save this. And we'll go ahead and compile also just to make sure that we don't have any specific errors. And now let's go ahead and make a runner for the restaurant. So we'll say new class. And we'll say public class runner. And you could also name this um, the name of the restaurant if you want. So why don't we do that? Let's just um, name it our runner Tom Kuhn. And then we are going to have our public method. So public static void main string arcs. And then we want to make um, a new menu. So we will say menu menu is equal to new menu. And then um, we can say um, system, well, let's use, we'll say menu dot get appetizers. I'm going to check if uh, how I named that. So it's get appetizer. Oh, and we need to pass in an index number, so I'm just going to copy it. And then I want to, I'm going to go ahead and put that into, I'm just going to print it out. So system.out.print ln And I'm going to go ahead and compile. I'll save the runner. And now if we did everything correctly, um, it should work for us. However, it's expecting a semicolon. All right, well, let's do this. Let's do let's do menu dot get index, and then we will dump that into item 
Oh, I have to pass in an item. So let's say um, item i1 is equal to, we're getting an item, and so I'm going to have to create a new item. So I'll say item, let's do it this way, i1, and that looks like an L. So I'll just say my item equal to new item. Oh, wait a minute, we have them in the, I don't need that because I'm getting an item out of the menu, um, so I don't have to instantiate one. So we'll just do my item, and then I need to pass in the index of the item that I want. So I'll pass in index one, and then I should be able to print out Considering it's taking so long, maybe have some errors. No, seems to like it. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, there it went. Dumplings and three dollars. Now the reason we can do this is because item has a two string in it and our two string is returning um, it's we don't have a size involved in it so it's returning the name plus the number and that's all we asked it to do so that is working perfectly well Alright, so let's go back to our menu and uh, maybe we want to know how many items are in our particular category in the restaurant. So we need to write a method that says returns the size of the category appetizers. So we'll say public int get appetizer size and we want to return um, we'll just say appetizers and then we will concatenate it with um, our getter so or we can use the size method so ap appetizers dot size and dot size um, gets us the length of the array, where in a string it was dot length. So now we can go back to this, and we can print out the size of the array. So we'll go up here and say menu dot get appetizer size. strange that it now it's thinking oh I'm missing a curly brace so when you have a legal start of expression a lot of times you're missing a curly brace and we can cannot concatenate oh a number with a string so we need to use integer dot two string and then pass in the size of the array. And 
Now, if I could spell correctly, I N T E G E R. Hmm, still doesn't like it for some reason. What does it say the error is? Cannot convert to an int. Oh, you know, the error is that this is expecting this to return an integer, and I'm trying to return a string. So we're going to just, let's just do return size, and then our main method here, we can set this into an integer. And then we'll go ahead and say system.out. See if this fixes it. I think I'm running low on memory space, and that's why my computer is running slow. You can see we have 10 appetizers in our array, and we also just printed it out that dumplings are $3. Okay, so what if we wanted to print out all of the appetizers in the array? Then we need to have a method that returns a string of all the method, all the appetizers. So we want to say um, returns all appetizers as a string. So here we need to use a loop to walk through the array. So we're going to say public string all appetizers. Say, I'm going to say get all appetizers is our method. And then we're going to set up a local variable called a, a, a mini menu. So we're going to say a string, a menu, and we'll set it to be blank. And then we're, we want to add a title to our menu first, like a header. So we'll say a menu plus equals appetizers and then we'll add an escape sequence and that'll start on the next line then and then we need a for loop and we'll set a counter so int i is equal to zero and then as long as i is less than appetizers dot size, go ahead and count up and keep going on to the next item. And then what we want to do is um, create a local item 
and then go ahead and get an item. So we'll say get at i, and we'll let our i counter be our index number. And then we want to um, add the ID, name, and price to the string that we're creating. So we're going to say a menu plus equals a plus i plus 1 plus, I'm putting a blank, plus a dot two string. And then we want an escape sequence to end it. So we go to the next line for each one. And then when we're done going through the loop, we want to return our A menu, which will be in the form of a string. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and compile and run this. Let's see. So here then, we'll go ahead and comment this out. Well, we'll say it's the number of appetizers in our menu. And then this guy, we're going to print out a list of the appetizers. And so we'll say um, system dot out dot print ln and then we'll do menu dot get all appetizers. And then this guy just prints a particular item in the menu. And it's an, actually an appetizer, but it's applicable to all the different categories. All right, so let's compile and see if we get what we want. All right, so let's run and see what we get. All right, so we know we got 10 appetizers. Here's our header. These are all the appetizers that it's printing out. And we do have a somewhat of a formatting problem here with this, and we can fix that later. And then we have our single item being printed out with the price. So here's the A. So if we look at this method in menu, what we're doing is we're adding an A at the beginning because it's an appetizer. Then we're taking our counter. Our counter is starting at 0 because the first thing in the array is at index 0. So if we want our customers to know that it's appetizer 1, we're just going to add 1 to our counter here. So the first time through, it's 1. And then we're using the two string of actually the item class. And the item class is giving us back the name and the price. And notice here that, um, so here's the name and here's the price. And what we really need to fix is the formatting. And we can do that with the formatting, some advanced methods in the formatting class. Um, and we'll do that later. So. This is the end of this video, and so what you can do is apply this to the other categories and make yourself methods for getting uh, noodles, and then 
you need to be able to get a specific item in the noodle category. You need to be able to get the entire size of the noodle array and you need to be able to get all noodles from the array. And so you should do this for appetizers, noodles, main, and drinks. So between this video and our next video, um, pop, create those methods and try to debug them and get them working and we'll go from there. See you next time.